it's starting and I can find Laura here and I'm going to hopefully make her bigger for everyone to see. Mm. All right, Laura, it's all you. Okay, well, it's wonderful ladies to be with you today. We are living in such a difficult time right now and there's so much uncertainty. I don't know about you, but this social distancing thing is kind of wearing on me and it's kind of isolating us from others. We, we can't go out to the places and activities we used to enjoy and these fires are making it such that we have to actually stay indoors. So it's even more restrictive and the play dates for our kids uh, aren't happening. The organized sports that allowed them to socialize and get their energy out isn't happening. And of course, working from home, many of your spouses and maybe you are working from home and that has its own set of challenges, keeping the kids quiet, finding some space to work. And of course, you have less time to yourself. You thought maybe you'd have more, and perhaps you used to, but come fall, you probably don't. And fall is ordinarily a time for restarts, right? And now we need to dig deeper into our adjustments. And we don't know when the new normal is going to come or what it will look like. So this is really, really hard. Yet when I think back to our lives before COVID, I think we can all realize that there were some things that weren't so great about how life used to be. I often heard moms that they were exhausted, they were overwhelmed, they were struggling to keep up with the demands of life. I don't know if you got a chance to watch the video or your leader sent along the great realization, but I thought it was so brilliant. It showed that families had stopped talking, the work-life balance had gotten way out of whack, technology was disconnecting people from people. There was one line in there that said, amidst the noise, they felt alone. Things before the pandemic may have felt normal, but they may not have been so very good for us. So perhaps there are some opportunities, some silver linings we may not notice if we're too focused on the downside. I was reading Isaiah 30, and I think it might be a good fit for the time that we're in. In verses 19 to 21, it says, though the Lord gave you adversity for food and suffering for drink, he will still be with you to teach you. You will see your teacher with your own eyes. Your ears will hear him. Right behind you, a voice will say, this is the way you should go, whether to the right or to the left. God is teaching us and guiding us in the midst of this current hardship. Now, I don't believe God brought the pandemic, but I do think he wants to use it to teach us something about himself and about ourselves and about his faithfulness. It seems like we've been stripped of our usual supports and we're kind of in this limbo. And it's been my experience that life in these in-between times, these times that are less certain, these are the ones where I learn most about myself and my priorities and who God is. So what could he be teaching us? What are some of the silver linings that might be instructing us? Well, I think the first one and perhaps the most obvious is that we're reconnecting in a different way in our families and in our marriages and with friends. Now, perhaps you're saying to yourself, wait a minute, I've had too much connecting as a family. I need some me time. I need to get out of here. <laughs> I need to get out. And I totally get that. I totally understand that thinking and that feeling. But I want you to remember those long commutes, the extended work days, the running to after school activities, the kids in childcare for a long period of time, they all led to disconnection in families that till now seem pretty unavoidable. Well, we're definitely unplugged. And while this is kind of disorienting, it does allow us to spend more time, more quality and quantity time with our spouse and children. Perhaps a season where we're required to be home together could be an opportunity to change our rhythms. Perhaps some of you remember the book that came out about 10 years ago. It was called The Price of Privilege. It was really popular with parents of middle school and high school parents, but I think it was something important for every parent. And it had two main points. And one was that stress was hurting our kids. This constant push to achieve and succeed and perform was really, really detrimental to our kids' development. The second one is that parents' busyness left kids feeling very disconnected. One child said, my mom was nowhere and everywhere at the same time. Our kids need downtime and they need quantity time. And when they're not being driven all over and they have, they have time to, and space to rest and play and learn at their own pace, that can be good. So what can you do as a family to make sure you make the most of this unique time? 
The first thing is I have a, we'll get through this together attitude. It's a hard time for everybody, but making lemonade out of lemons helps your kids to become more resilient and resourceful. It's hard times that often give birth to new ideas and positive changes. So have that we'll get through this together attitude. The second is give yourself some grace. You know, you don't have to do it all. You might feel that there's a lot of expectations regarding supporting your kids online learning, but just remember you're learning too. You don't have to do it all right. And when you're not stressed, guess what? You're more available to your family. Also use the time the kids are not in school to just have fun. Do those things you didn't have time for before. You know, those things that got squeezed out when you were so busy running kids around. You know, do baking with your kids. You have time for that now. Read longer together, play games as a family. We love to play with our grandkids, just, you know, kick the can or hide and go seek or just fun games around the house and yard. Have pajama parties with your kids. If you've got small tents or sheets, set them up in the family room, pretend you're camping and then cook some marshmallows in your fireplace. Many of you are familiar with the fun dancing programs that help the kids get the wiggles out like Go Noodle or Cosmic Yoga. Mo Willems that you might know is a children's author. He wrote those elephant and piggy books and he's doing something very cool right now. He's doing something called the Small Works Projects. And what he's doing is he's inviting kids to do some small act of kindness or generosity and then send in, uh, you know, let him know, write him and let him know what it was. And he's gonna select one and he's gonna give away 50 pieces of small art that he's done to that child who did that small act of kindness. You can find that uh, online under Mo Willems. I did a blog post back in April called 25 Tips to Maximize Your Family Time While You Shelter in Place. And that's just a good resource. It's on my website, which is www.lauratagger.com. And it's really a, just a fun resource if you need some ideas. So family fun is a great antidote to the stress that we're under. Another place we need to reconnect is in our marriages. You know, long-term stress is an amplifier of what's not resolved yet. Our close quarters increases our stress. You know, it's easy to take our mate for granted or take stress out on them. I'm sure you've had that experience. Make sure you're paying attention to those things that your mate is doing right, those little things that make life easier. So use this time to start new habits of connection with your spouse. Tell your spouse one thing you really appreciate about them every day. When the kids go down, light a candle and just have a candlelight conversation. There's something about candlelight that just calms us inside, right? I sent along a couple of handouts that were inspired by John Gottman, marital researcher. And one was the stress reducing conversation. And this is really a helpful thing. If you're experiencing some stress, either individually or between you, it's a wonderful tool to just come together and have an emotional check-in with each other. It's a, it gives you guidelines that help you stay on the same team as you have the conversation so it goes more positively. The other resource is called the Love Map Game, and you may think you know your spouse through and through, but let me tell you, if you play this game, you're going to discover some new things about them you didn't know, and it's uh, always fun to deepen your relationship in that way. Or maybe you might consider reading a marriage devotional with your spouse. There's some really great ones on you version. Uh, Gary Thomas did one called A Lifelong Love. Very good. You might check that out. And offer your grace, let go of those small irritations that don't matter. In my book, Making Love Last, in chapter eight, I shared other ways you can lean into your marriage, but really take this time to nourish your marriage relationship. You also wanna be reconnecting with friends. Kathy was right, we need relationship. This fellow from Stanford said, um, don't call it social distancing, call it distance socializing. We need to distance socialize now. You know, we are made to be relationships. So connect with others in all the safe ways that you can. Maybe make a picnic dinner and throw the kids in the car with some games or movies and meet up with a few families in a big parking lot or a big cul-de-sac and have a tailgate party spread out so you can see each other and visit. Or invite friends to bring over a takeout dinner with their own beverages and lawn chairs and have a distance visit in the backyard or a movie night. Have mommy workout classes in the court outside or in your driveway. My niece is, uh, teaches salsa dancing and she sent me a video of a few girlfriends, they're about 10 feet away and she's leading these salsa classes and they're getting their exercise and, and social connection that way. You can also reach out, you know, look for someone who might be lonelier than you, an elderly neighbor or a family member or single friends or widowers. It's a good time to bear each other's burdens and lighten the load of someone else. So reconnecting, especially with your husband and kids, it's an important silver lining. 
The second silver lining I want to talk about is resting. You know, as young moms, the idea of resting might seem close to impossible, especially with your new responsibilities of virtual school. You feel the weight of educating your kids on top of all else you do, and it feels like too much. You'd like to rest to peat your feet up and take a break, but you feel like you have no time. Do you know that God made you with a need for rest? What we're experiencing right now is in one sense a forced Sabbath. Sabbath is a Hebrew word that means to rest from labor. It's one day a week set aside for worship and resting. It's a time when we take a break from all our duties and responsibilities and just physically quiet ourselves. God urges us to take this Sabbath rest because he knew our batteries needed recharging. And if we're in constant activity, we're gonna lose sight of him. I love when Jesus tells us in what he tells us in Matthew 11, 28 through 30. He says this, come to me all you who are weary and carry heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. Do you feel weary? Do you feel like you're doing some heavy lifting right now? Jesus invites you to come and learn from him. When he urges you to take his yoke on you, he's really urging you to let him guide you. Like a farmer guides his oxen by putting a yoke on their shoulders to train them where to go. His promise to you is that if you let him guide you, you will find rest. You will be renewed. I think rest is one of God's greatest gifts to us. And I think this pandemic has, for most of us, been this enforced rest, especially initially. Some of us have welcomed this slowing down, but many of us have a lot of difficulty slowing down. We found a way to become busy again. Busyness is often a way we distract ourselves from ourselves. If we stay busy, we don't have to feel, we don't have to look inside. I would really encourage you to reconsider your busyness. Take Jesus's invitation to put your feet up. Maybe when your baby's sleeping, give the older one something to occupy themselves and make yourself a cup of tea and find a quiet spot and steal a few minutes of peace. Find another adult in your bubble, maybe it's your hubby or someone else to give you a break once or twice a week and go for a walk. You might consider honoring the Sabbath by taking a day each week to rest from work and technology and school and enjoy worship and relaxation and play together as a family. It's been my experience that when I rest and allow my heart and mind and body to slow down and rejuvenate, I usually accomplish more than if I stayed busy. I'm more able to weed out what's unimportant and focus on what's lasting. Another silver lining is rebalancing. And this is about rebalancing your work and life balance. This season, I think, has been a reevaluation for many couples to look at the sacrifices you've been making as a family, like commuting and not having shared meals and overcommitment. We've allowed the competitive, fast paced living in the Bay Area to kind of dictate our lifestyle and our choices. But only when you're forced to slow down do we often reconsider what it's done to our family life and then begin to have a different perspective. Now with more flexibility at work or if parents both work at home, you likely have the opportunity to have meals together. This is a real gift, the gift of shared dinner times. There's such precious talking that can happen, instilling of values and just a time of connecting. So I encourage you to, and I, I think you are, I think it's one of the gifts of this time to really value that family dinner time. If one or both of you are working from home, one of the imbalances that can happen is blurred boundaries between work and shutting off work and then being available for the family. When your work hours are unstructured, kids are more likely to intrude. If they know you'll be available, they know when you'll be available, they can usually be more respectful. So be creative about setting boundaries, set certain times that the family can predict and protect. And as moms, one of the balancing acts you're doing is the new one is, is teachers. You're being teachers. And if you don't work outside the home, you used to have this time to yourself when the older ones went off to school. But now you're helping with their online learning. And you need time to prep. You need time to sit with them as they do their schoolwork. You likely need to follow a certain schedule. You have less time for yourself. So I'd encourage you, and you probably are doing it already, but keep a strict schedule when it comes to school. And when the school day is over, reward yourself with a break. Part of rebalancing too is creating a more simplified life. 
most of us has realized in this season that we can live with less. Before COVID, many young moms seemed overwhelmed with keeping up with expectations. There was this undercurrent of competition to do it all and to have it all, and life was complicated. It's as if we've been given a much needed break from all of that. You know, most of us as Americans are strong consumers of goods and services, and this time has allowed us to reshape some of our spending patterns. Some of you may be finding a simplified life. Living with less is a more peaceful way to live. Many of you have taken time to declutter. We decided to go through all our closets and drawers and even our garage and just get rid of all that stuff we really don't need. We made a big trip to Shepherd's Gate. So think about paring down and pare down your wardrobe. Only keep what you really love. Take some time to free up some precious space and, and give those things to people who might need them more. Some of you might be dealing with a job loss or have some anxiety about possible layoffs and you're concerned about what that might mean financially. You may have found it necessary to kind of tighten your belt on expenses and make do without spending as much as you used to. Creating a very basic budget can help you live more simply and save more. So I sent you a budget planner sheet from the Blissful Mind blog. I hope you'll check that out. Rebalancing by simplifying your surroundings, your commitments, your schedule is a way to get refocused on what's really important. So take this time to make choices about how you want to live in the future. Take a new look at your lifestyle, redefining what is truly important. It's likely there's some changes you want to hold on to. If rebalancing is about shifting your surroundings, recentering is about your inside life. In our pre-COVID life, many of us would admit we gotten off center, we'd become disconnected from ourselves. This season is an opportunity to recenter our lives. And I thought about it in three ways, savoring nature, spiritual renewal, and building resiliency. Getting out in nature has so refreshed my spirit during this season. Granted, during the fires, it's not quite as possible, but before the fires, during the COVID, it really was refreshing. It's helped me recenter myself and get grounded. You may have noticed before the fires that nature was getting a makeover worldwide. The earth was beginning to breathe. It was beginning to reset and rejuvenate and heal, and it will again after the fires. We had cleaner air, there was a reduction in carbon emissions, we had better water clarity, even the smog in LA dissipated. In India, the peaks of the Himalayas could be seen for the first time in a generation. So get out in nature, exercise, hike and walk and cycle and do yoga. You might create an outdoor scavenger hunt with your kids and collect treasures and then come home and make a collage or keep a treasure chest. Go somewhere that has a great view of the sunset and let yourself linger and admire it. Use a star app like Sky Safari and help your kids enjoy the constellations. Or take that camping trip outside. Set up your tent in the backyard. We did this for a staycation for my one of my my kids and their family and uh, it was wonderful all the boys slept in the tent and we did s'mores on the lawn of course we burnt a hole in the lawn with the charcoal thing we had but it's recovering we're okay with that but it was a lot of fun so enjoy nature it's also a time to get recentered spiritually as young moms the idea of taking time alone to nurture yourself spiritually might feel like a big stretch but I would suggest to you that if you find this time and protect it as a special time for your own personal growth, it will be one of the biggest benefits during this sheltering in place and hopefully for the rest of your life. Perhaps you can find it in the early morning hour before the rest of the family gets up or a Saturday morning while dad takes the kids for a walk. Or if you're a night person, perhaps it's after the kids go down. This is just a time when you slow down, you breathe deeply and you reconnect with God and with yourself. You know, some of us do fear if we slowed down, not only would we begin to feel unpleasant feelings, but we'd be face to face with our own brokenness and that feels too vulnerable. Well, God's specialty is our brokenness. He meets us there. So if you decide to take this time to grow spiritually, I have a few tips for you. One is to still yourself and embrace the silence that will happen. Your mind is gonna fill up with all the to-do lists and the worries, trust me, I've been there. But just invite those thoughts to go away. Kind of talk to them. Reassure them you're going to get to those things later. By embracing this forced isolation and allowing yourself to be silent, you're actually preparing to be more present to your own life. You might find an encouraging devotional and wake up early enough to read it without interruption every day. Some women have really enjoyed Jesus Calling, but there's lots of devotionals out there. You may push back and say, nope, I need my sleep. 
but you'll be surprised how much this helps you get centered before the day begins. Another thing you might do is take the Enneagram. It's a great tool to deepen your self-awareness. Uh, we did this, I did this with a group of women right before COVID started. We, we started in and we did the Enneagram and it was so revealing about ourselves and we got to know each other in such a deep way because it was really very self-disclosing. So think about doing the Enneagram. You can find it on the Enneagram Institute uh, website. And then take time to pray each day. Praying a blessing over mealtime is great, but consider it a more extended time of prayer and really enjoying God's present. He yearns for that time with you. And there's, if, you're, if you're stuck and you don't quite know how to pray, there's some wonderful helps, prayer helps on the app in version. So check out version for some prayer apps. And be sure to reconnect with your church family, just like Kathy and Tyler said. It's just a, a wonderful support, and they're doing so many wonderful things to keep you all connected. And of course, Mothers Together keeps you connected as well. The third way we are recentering is building resiliency. Resilience is the ability to overcome difficulties and recover your stability. The ability to restore balance and come back to your center. This sheltering has lasted longer than any of us expected. There's this protracted sense of crisis and it takes courage to persevere through this. Viktor Frankl is an author and a concentration camp survivor and he said that during protracted trauma, we either move toward generosity or we move toward self-centeredness. So practicing generosity in the midst of the crisis actually builds your resi resilience. So reach out with acts of kindness and compassion to others. Focus on the positive. It really helps you better absorb the negative. You know, we've just canceled our fourth trip. This time was due to air quality. And we started to complain and we were feeling, you know, frustrated about that. And then we looked at each other and we said, you know, it's a really, it's a bummer we can't go, but we are healthy. Our kids are healthy. That's pretty awesome. So focus on the positive and remind yourself what you're grateful for. Ask, what is the gift in this situation? You might keep a gratefulness journal and write down several things you're grateful for each day and then reflect on your feelings and the depth of your gratitude. Let yourself marinate in that. You know, your psychological well-being depends less on the things that happen to you and more on the things you pay attention to. So gratitude will shift your brain's attention. COVID-19 has personally invited each of us, I think, to strengthen our resilience muscles. The last silver lining I think God might be teaching us is releasing. I think the most important thing we can learn from this experience of the pandemic, and you may not like this one, but I think it's critical that I mention it, is that control is an illusion. Most of us like to think we're in control of our lives when something threatens that, like an illness or a loss of relationship, a natural disaster, fires, a pandemic, we tend to go into fear. And what do we do when we fear? We try to increase our control over our circumstances by creating routines or structure. And when change to our routines is abrupt and it's not of our own choosing, like in this pandemic, it rocks our world. And when change doesn't have a clear end in sight, it leaves us to wonder what's the rest of life gonna look like. Anxiety and depression can, can take hold of us. I grew up in Southern California and I'd often go to the beach to do some body surfing. And one of the things you need to watch out for is a riptide. A riptide is a powerful channel of water that pulls you out to sea. And if you get caught in it, your temptation is to panic and get control by swimming hard into shore. In your fear, you try to fight your current and get to safety. Don't do it. <laughs> the best thing you can do is just relax, float on your back, let the current take you out, and then swim parallel to shore when the current subsides and then swim at an angle towards shore to come in. You see, you have to let go of control to save your life. I think it's the same thing in a pandemic. Accepting your circumstances allows you to float on your back until the current releases you and you can swim to shore. You have to let go of control. The truth is I think God often uses hardship and calamities to remind us that we are not in control, but he is. He often uses these trials to loosen our grip on our own life and teach us to trust in his goodness. He's been described in the Psalms as our rock, our refuge, and our hope. This time has really caused me to look at what I'd been hoping for, what I'd been looking to for hope. 
my relationships, a vaccine, my savings, the stock market, medical experts, the government. What was I looking to for my hope? Now remember the passage from Isaiah 30. Oops, gonna have to find it again. Um, when you realize that God is teaching you in the midst of this and you begin to see your teachers, the next verse says this, then you will destroy all your silver idols and your precious gold images. You will throw them like filthy rags out saying, good riddance. When we recognize he is teaching us, we can let go of the things we were looking to for hope instead of him. Those idols and images are whatever we've been depending on to make life work other than God. He is our teacher and he is alone is our hope. Perhaps this pandemic has exposed some fears for you. Perhaps God is nudging you to grow in faith, faith that helps you stay anchored during the storms of life. Romans 12, 12 says, be joyful in hope, be patient in tribulations, be constant in prayer. If you wanna not just survive this season, but thrive through it, use this time to develop your prayer life. Increase your dependence on God, the one who can uphold you through it all. There is hope, God has a good future plan for us. And through prayer, we can grow in trust in his presence and his purposes. This moment, ladies, is crammed full of opportunities to grow, to deepen, to change the direct direction of our families and our marriages. God is inviting us into something new. So don't yearn for the past. Look to what God is creating anew. Holding on will always be what holds us back. He has a wild adventure ahead for you, filled with goodness, if you look to him for what lies ahead. So bless you on this journey we're in. Thank you, Laura, so much for that. I, um, you have such a wonderful talent. We love your perspective mm -hmm. that you have, not just on, on family and on marriage, but on scripture and how you really bring that into the practicalities that we see in life and the, and the day-to-day -day things that we are feeling and we're experiencing. Um, uh, to everyone too, I didn't give, I, for some reason I'm doing bios at the end of things today. <laughs> for those of you who aren't familiar with Laura Taggart, she is a licensed and uh, licensed family and marriage therapist and she's been practicing this for over 30 years and she has a huge heart for God and for faith, which I'm sure you could tell just from her talk. Um, but she is also an author. And so um, one of the things we'd like to do today is uh, auction off one of her books, Making Love Last, Divorce Proofing Your Young Marriage. So I, what we thought we would do is have Laura pick a number one through 76 and uh, we'll, we'll, or Oh, wait, I might have said the wrong number. One through 95, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I was looking at the attendance, but we actually have 95 moms that are registered. So to make it fair, um, Laura, if you could pick a number, then uh, we will look it up on the list really quick. And that person, we will mail you the book um, or drop it off, one of the two. Okay. All right, how about number 31? Okay, I need like a drum roll sound. I didn't think to have that loaded on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so is uh, Courtney Favreau on? I am. Okay, you are the winner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So we, uh, I'm sure Jackie has your info, so we'll send it to you. Um, now we would actually like to open this up to some Q&A for Laura. So the best thing to do would be to use the chat functionality and to send me um, chats with your questions that I can read to Laura. Uh, you can send the questions to everyone or you can send them to me. Um, and I'd also like to remind everyone, if you haven't done it, to um, find your name in the participants and rename yourself with your small group number in front of you, uh, just because we, I need that to create the breakout groups. And I'm also going to stop the recording. <laughs>